Hello, somebody. The most important thing here is that listen to this. There are relationships that are people you know who are also vital to your life. Don't despise them. There are people you are going to meet whom you have never known before who, are, who could also be relevant to your life. There's a very powerful is, uh, a revelation in scripture. We have to learn to uh, cultivate and leverage all kinds of relationship. In, in Psalm 17 verse 14, it says, Men are the hand of God. Men are what the hands of God. They are the ones that will help you when God wants. He said, "He said from 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 men which are what thy hand, O Lord. Men are the hands of God. When God wants to open a door in your life, He will position a man before you. Yeah. When God wants to help you to enter your next level, He will position. When I say a man, a person, a man or woman is not gender sensitive. So recognize that men are the hands of God, and sometimes you might not even know." what they can do for you but learn to relate with an open heart because that the person you are god has positioned in front of you might be the person that will help you to assess your future yeah when they when joseph was looking for his brothers he was looking for his brothers his brothers went um went to take care of their father's flock in the desert and a time came when he was looking for them as he was looking for them he couldn't find them the bible said he saw a man in the desert and he was he was able to ask the man do you know did you see some people here many people especially in this part of the world you they treat people as if they don't matter and you don't really realize that the people you meet might be the difference between your future and your present i'm talking to you about access pass into your future Learn to value people. Men at the hand of God. He asked. He, they, he asked them. Said, "Did you see some people?" Said, yeah. He, they just went this way. They were his guide that led them to his future. Because after he met his brother, they had their own plan to conspire against him, to sell him to to Egypt, where he's going to be fulfilling the future that God has for him. But that man that he met was his connection to finding them because if he has not spoken to that man he wouldn't have found them they wouldn't have sold him he wouldn't have been in egypt he wouldn't have become a prime minister <laughs> yeah so men are very important yeah even david david one time lost uh, he went to a, 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 uh, you can find david's story for summit 30. He, he he went to he went to a battle he, he they came and they raided his village and they took everything that they had after they took everything that they had the bible says as they came they cried they wept they've taken their wives their children their possession and they were crying then suddenly they decided to go after the, the, the troops as they were going they found an egyptian on the road he was he was he was dying he was hungry david said hey let's feed him Let's give him everything that he need. Then the man finally came up. Then he said, are you okay? And I said, yeah, are you okay? I normally ask people, are you happy? Say, are you happy? And I say, yeah, I'm happy. Say, okay. Do you certainly know these people? Because uh, Did you see any some people who, you know, who were like this, describe them? They say, oh, I was with them. We went to raid this place, raid this place. Say, oh, can you take us to where they are? That was the secret for his recovery. Yes. That's how he recovered everything that he has lost. But what if he has ignored the man that was dying? And, this is a useless person. It doesn't mean anything. Men are the hands of God. Yes. Another instance here we find in 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 5 to 6, we, there, was a, there was a man called Saul. Saul and his servant, they went to look for his father's lost donkey. As they went from city to city, they couldn't find uh, the donkey. They got frustrated and Saul said, Look, let's go back. Least we also become missing. And then, <laughs> and they began to look for us. And the Bible says, The servant said, Oh, we are close to the city. There's a man of God in this city. Let us go to him. Per adventure, he can tell us the way. That we go. Look at it. Say, behold, now there is, a, there is in this city a man of God, is honorable man, and he and all that he said coming to pass. Surely, now let us go the other adventure. He can show us what our way that we should go. Inside Saul 
was a great destiny. He was ordained by God to be the next, the first king of Israel. Yes. And God positioned him to go find Samuel. As they were going, before he got to the man of God, God spoke to the man and said, there's somebody that's going to come. It's going to, it's, I've already arranged for him to be the, the, the captain of my people, Israel. God already spoke. So when Samuel saw uh, Saul, God said, that is the person I was talking to you about. Can I announce to you that God spoke to you, to me about you? Amen. That's why this conference is taking place. Amen. That your future is colorful. Amen. Yeah, your future is glorious. And you are going to assess it. And nothing will stop you from entering your future. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That's why this conference is called. So that you can enter your glorious future. You see, there are people who got the same invitation that you got. And they said, what is this? I remember one of the turnaround conference. We had a testimony. A woman was giving the, the flyer of the turnaround conference. I wish I had a flyer here. The, she said, she was giving a flyer for the turnaround conference. She said, when I looked at it, I squeezed it. And threw it into the trash. Nonsense. But that was the deliverance for her. She had a daughter who was bipolar. And when the thing comes upon the daughter, she behaves in strange ways. She said, on the day the turnaround conference was going to start, the daughter began to behave strangely again. Then she said, then God told her, why not take that flyer and go there? And she was the doctor. She was a doctor, but she couldn't cure her daughter of the situation. And she came and God cured the daughter. Amen. God healed the daughter. Amen. Oh, yeah. The same program she despised. She came, God healed the daughter. Yeah, still talk, yeah we still talk now. She has finished college. Yeah, she still calls me and says, Look, every time I talk to you, I'm just happy. Yeah, that's what she said. Every time I talk to you, I'm just happy. But she could, have, she could have despised it. We had her testimony here. She said she had a problem and she, she was crying in that morning, crying. And I told her, I said, today that story is changing. She said, I usually I said, I'm telling you that it will change. I was getting ready for turnaround. God was speaking to me about I said, your problem is the one for experiment. I said, Would that thing, she said, can it happen? I said, it's going to happen today. She said, Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. I see. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it happened. That's why I said, I want to come to church. I just want to come to church. Your, your story will change. Amen. Saul became the next king of Israel. Relationship will open you to especially godly relationship to your future. Treasure it. There was another person with a scripture I want to mention before I tell you the next thing here. Her name was Ruth. Ruth connected to Naomi. Naomi was her mother-in-law. But she valued her relationship. Two people. Naomi had two daughter-in-laws. When her husband died, and their two husbands died, she was left with two daughter-in-law. One looked at her and said, Hey, woman. Bye. Bye. Somebody will say, Do this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. And the other one, Clave unto Naomi. Naomi was a Moabitish lady, but her understanding of the relationship that God has brought her away. One day in Ruth chapter number three, verse one, Naomi that you thought has nothing. She said to Ruth. Now then Naomi said, Naomi, her mother-in-law said to her daughter, Shall I not seek rest for you? So the woman had the capacity to give her or enter her into rest in the name of Jesus Christ if you are hearing the sound of my voice you are entering into your rest every struggle every distress in your life will come to an end from today you are spiritually maritally financially mentally in every area in your health I decree and I prophesy you are entering into your rest shall I not seek rest for thee that what that it may be well with thee. Naomi knew that. Look, I can get you rest, and I can make your life easy. Your life can be well through a person. Men are the hands 
of God. Can you give me the NLT? Look at something. I want you to see something in NLT. In the NLT, it says, my daughter, it is time that I found a permanent home for you. So that what you will be provided for. But when you saw Naomi, if if Oprah knew that Naomi can help somebody, I mean, knew that uh, Naomi can help somebody to find a permanent home and have rest, she would never have departed from Naomi. But she looked at it and said, "Can anything, any good thing come out of Nazareth? Can any good thing come out of Nazareth?" Yeah, God has packaged a man all the way from another country to bring him here to be with you, to be a blessing to you. you are, and some some people are saying, "What is he saying? What is he saying?" By the grace of God, my, my friend, I've never told. We're all engineers together, my engineer. But, so, but here we are preaching the gospel. So I say, "Oh, what is that? What is that?" People don't mind think pastors are jobless. Go and get a job. Even if I'm working as an engineer, I might be any more than a whole lot of people. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm telling you the truth. But there's no greater calling than this. Amen. Yeah. Look at me also. I am here because a man prophesied that one day I see you taking the gospel to the nations. I've never, I don't look like it. I've never traveled anywhere. I could have heard the prophecy and said, nations. I didn't even have a passport. I never said, please. <laughs> it's just a hype. But look at where that hype has brought me. Yeah. 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 It was a prophecy. Men are the hand of God. So your glorious future, you know, you are one relationship away from accessing your glorious future. May you be sensitive to recognize the relationships and to value and to leverage the relationship that God brings to your way. Relationship are your access paths. So when you meet a person, that person can be the key to your new home. That person can be the key to your next job. It can be the key to your million. Level relationships. And in the name of Jesus Christ, you're going to see your, you're going to access great things. Yeah, you are always one relationship away from your glorious destiny. Yeah. May you be able to connect in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah.